Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery preparing to check in on a couple of my European Nightcrawler worm bins. Not the worm buckets. I've got buckets down on the lower level over there that have European Nightcrawlers in them as well. But right above them in that middle layer, I've got two bins with European Nightcrawlers living in them. Systems that we last checked in on 12 days ago. And these are the bins, well at least bin number one over here is the one where we've been doing this test with the compostable bag and during the last check-in I did sort of poll the viewers on their opinion on where to go next with that test because for some time now we've been just noticing very little if any progress on the compostable bags breakdown in these systems and I've got some stats about the systems to share with you you'll see it's been a very very long time since this test has been underway and I think based on the feedback I've gotten from the viewers that it's time to bring this test to an end. Obviously we always have the opportunity to bump into something that's going on in these bins when we get them up on the bench to see. That could change our mind but chances are we're going to be bringing that test to an end today. So let me get a glove on, get the bins up on the bench, and we're going to get to work. As you can see my little information board here is jam-packed with interesting bits of stuff about these systems. The one thing that might really stand out if you look carefully is the age of these systems, which is now 258 days of age relative to the time frame of the compostable bag experiment, um, is far less, right? So how could this test have started even before these bins were put in service? Well, it's because this test predates these two systems being put in service. The bag came with the worms. From the old home that these worms used to occupy before they were launched off into these bins. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how long this test has been going. I don't know, there's just something interesting about these numbers, you know, since this is a leap year, which is technically 366, not 365 days of old, days, uh, days long. <laughs> the, um, the actual time frame for how long this bag test has been going is one year and 100 days exactly and then there's other number down here this actually represents the the amount of time that there's been active composting going on because there was a pause a certain amount of time when the bag was not really down in the bin amongst the worms it was just sort of out on the surface in a dry place and that number is kind of interesting too some of you might uh, get a kick out of that coincidence interesting number trust me it wasn't done deliberately it just seemed like after 12 days it was time to come back in here and give these guys a quick feeding and as you can see according to our counter this is now feeding number 22 of these worms the last time when we fed them we gave them some really yummy stuff such as cantaloupe melon and cucumber peels and a few other things that were kind of frozen into a solid block and I couldn't even really tell what some of the stuff that they were getting was but I think we're going to be switching now, based on the age of these systems, to what I kind of refer to as a small particle size um, feeding regimen. So that typically, in my book, includes coffee. And I've also got my worm chow here. So I figured a combination of these two small particle size food items would make up today's feeding of these worms. And you know, besides the... Um, Besides the foods, I figured we would also treat them to a little bit of, not much, but a little bit of bedding in the form of these old feeding zone indicators because I've got replacement feeding zone indicators, obviously. But a lot of times when I feed this way, small particle size feedings, I tend to just want to blend in that food all over the place, almost in a way doing away with the whole concept of a feeding zone at that point. So before we get any further, I think it's just time to really... Um, get to the heart of the matter here with regards to our compostable bag test. I think we should simply extract the compostable bag carefully so that we get the entire thing and not tear it and leave bits of it behind to litter the nice castings that are developing in here. And that will make it official. That'll bring this compostable bag test to an end. And um, my only hope is that the viewers do agree that that was the right way to play it. At first I was wondering what all this stuff could be and now I remembered what part of that um, 
last feeding consisted of that little block of frozen stuff that I was unable to dislodge from itself. It was a bunch of potato peels where the potato had been boiled ahead of time to uh, soften it up and then make it easy to peel or maybe a little bit easier to peel and then frozen. So all that wet potato peel, damp potato peel was sort of in a big chunk and that's the reason all this um, thin material here which is actually just potato peel was all coming out of here in a sort of a single pile. Now it's going to get spread out and give the worms easier access to that stuff so that they can continue doing away with this stuff for us. Last time when we went after the compostable bag, which I'm already starting to see bits of right here, I thought I felt a little pop or a snap as if the thing had torn in my hands from my rough handling of it. And I'd really prefer to just get this thing out in a single piece. I mean, we've come this far now. A year and a hundred days of managing to not break this thing into multiple pieces. It's always, over all that time, somehow managed to remain a single object right there. The compostable bag. And, I mean, you got to admit, the thing is tattered. There's not much remaining of it and I know there's a few worms still hanging on this thing so I think before extracting it since it's not going back in it might be best just to leave it out here in the bright light so that the worms that are still hanging around on the thing retreat down into the bedding so that we can simply extract this object and retire it from this experiment and hopefully we do so without accidentally trashing any little wormies because this thing I don't know if it's worth it to put it out into my compost barrel I'm not that um, attached to it at this point I'm just as satisfied to simply drop it into the trash pail and call the experiment done with that so little bits and pieces of leftover. Some of the other things that we already bumped into over here as well were very slow composting objects that um, predate the last check-in. Stuff like what's here in my hand, the stem of a banana is what I believe that to be. This much more um, obvious and easily identifiable, ob identifiable object is the, um, the seed from a mango. And I think it's really the, the seed itself is inside that tough husk. So that's both the husk and the mango. This to me looks like perhaps another banana stem. So um, I, I can certainly see some of these slow composting objects, maybe not the banana stems, but that mango husk, uh, mango seed husk, certainly does seem like the sort of thing that has the potential to maybe accompany these worms eventually into their new home, unless by some chance it suddenly starts to see a great deal more um, movement on getting broken down. So I'm just moving over now into bin number two where we generally don't feel like we've got to be quite as careful since there's never been any sort of an experiment running over here. Here we just sort of dig right in and get to work here. Um, stem of a pumpkin. Here the stem of a banana peel. Over here is the, um, the seed and the outer husk from a mango. So typically when my systems are set up like these, two bins launched on the same day, they do get fed in very similar ways. So you do often see matching leftover foods as you start making your way in. Although over here we might not see any peel of potato because I think that that entire wad of potato peel was sort of in one frozen together lump and I was unable to break it apart or separate it and divvy it out to two systems equally so it all ended up over there in bin number one so no potato peels for these guys but I think both systems did actually get half of a lemon and I'm a little surprised that we didn't encounter the half of a lemon in here I'm sure it's here somewhere in bin number one but where it is I'm not sure but I generally don't go too much out of my way trying to track down bits and pieces of food. Um, I think 
at this point on the topic of food wow look at that <laughs> amazing how this thing has held together as a single object for a while there since I didn't want the bag to become something that worms would crawl into and get trapped inside of and be unable to nourish themselves or whatever I did tie off the end of the bag to make it impossible for worms to crawl into it but once it started to go to pieces like this I uh, I untied that knot and that's the reason I think we've got a little segment of the compostable bag over here that outlived the rest of the bag considerably because of the fact that it had been sort of tied up into a knot preventing worms from or whatever it is that's been breaking this material down preventing the breakdown process to occur so interesting how we can still sort of just open this thing up a little bit and actually see some of the printing on the bag or at least I'm not sure if the camera's catching it but I'm definitely seeing some of the um, printing on the bag where we might even catch a little tiny fragment of the word compostable wow so interesting that we can actually open this thing up and read what's still written on it <laughs> but um I don't know how much of interest this thing really is to some people I, I guess some of the feedback I did get was hey let's keep the test going but um, I just made sort of an executive decision there to call it quits I think before we move on I'd really like to aerate the um, the material throughout these systems and I believe in that process we're just going to allow a lot of these food fragments that are all over the place to sort of blend in the only things that I'd really like to keep central to the system so that we kind of know where they're at are these large slow composting objects so I think as far as these mango and mango seeds and pumpkin stems we'll make an attempt to try to keep those centered in the bins but I think before we go any further I'd like to just move or move through the entire system in both cases give all the material a nice aeration this will give us a nice opportunity to see how the dispersion of the worms are throughout the system even though you know cantaloupe melon and the peels of cucumbers were placed right down the middle and you would expect a good many worms to be there in pursuit of those delicious food items which they probably did away with pretty quickly um, you still find a good many worms hanging out in the outskirts of these systems because I guess you know worms perhaps get their fill pig out on the abundant supply of food and then uh, just kind of move on you know they don't really feel that need to hang out and remain where the food supply is they'll just keep on roaming and exploring and I like to keep the systems pretty cozy for the worms to be able to do that comfortably without feeling like they're entering into materials that's perhaps too dry or harsh or inhospitable for them to for them to be in and it is pretty interesting to find material that's fairly damp throughout considering we've been covering up only with paper recently allowing for the systems to get a little bit more airflow and also perhaps it permit a little bit additional evaporation maybe not so much as the air in the house gets more and more humid it has a tendency to not absorb moisture into itself since it's already kind of packed with moisture being as humid as it is humid as it is <laughs> um, but still definitely allows for a lot more um, loss of moisture through evaporation than if we had you know some sort of plastic top coverings on the systems interesting that we um even after we did a pretty thorough mixing of the material in bin number one we found no half of a lemon and I, I suspect that it's probably in there with about as much leftovers as we see over there but for whatever reason we just didn't really encounter it so I um I'm getting this feeling like we've been drawing this check-in out a little bit longer than we need to so why don't we just create a little bit of a divot you know there's not a whole heck of a lot of food to give these little guys so I don't think we need a very deep hole into which we're gonna drop today's 
feeding. But I do like to generally submerge the food and sort of um, locate it in a specific spot so we know where to check next time to see how they did on the most recent feeding. Let's get the uh, old food scraps that we encountered along the way back down in there too. And yeah, you know, we're being a little bit stingy on bedding, I suppose. But um, I guess a couple coffee filters is better than nothing. Last time we took a piece of newspaper and we just sort of draped it out beneath the feeding zone as the the bedding boost not much of a boost but a little bit of a boost to go hand in hand with their feeding and at that point that newspaper probably got drenched with the juices coming out of the cucumber and cantaloupe bits leading to that stuff probably getting nibbled up right away not to mention the fact that since we've been pretty stingy on bedding lately here anyway that might also contribute to why we saw very little leftovers of the newspaper used last time. And then my uh, my worm chow. So, that makes it official. Bye-bye compostable bag test. And I really appreciate everyone's engagement on the topic, giving me feedback, giving me input, giving me ideas. And I do regret for those of you who really wanted to see the test through up until the point where the thing actually would be gone, I, I just have this funny feeling, and it does seem like a good many other viewers had this tendency to agree that perhaps the intention of the manufacturer of that bag was to attempt composting of the bag in a hot composting environment, such as a compost pile out in your backyard where the temperatures get up to like 130 degrees for many days straight because of all the bacteria activity and stuff like that, and perhaps that's what a bag like that needs to actually break down but when you're doing composting in a worm bin here and there you will see rises in temperature as newly added foods start to break down but in general worm composting systems are sort of considered as a cold composting environment which might have just not been compatible with that particular type of compostable bag so I think that's that all right, everyone, that's pretty much it now for our check-in with these European night crawlers. Transitioning them from big chunk foods to small particle size foods in the hopes that we can eventually drive these systems to harvest. Try to harvest their lovely castings and move the worms off to greener pastures into yet another new system eventually someday soon. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, Please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.